Over the last six years, to be precise, 2,300 days, the Keystone Pipeline has been subject to five extensive reviews by the U.S. State Department, interventions from the EPA, the object of fiercest protests from environmentalists, and counter-arguments from the labor and oil industry. Those 2,300 days, longer by a Sherman's march than the Civil War, were ostensibly dedicated to the merits of the project, its environmental concerns, and inevitably, CO2 emissions and global warming. The great procrastination for approving Keystone was very much less, however, about actual harm than it was about the various strands of politics that the project came to represent. For environmentalists, Keystone was about the symbolism of their cause far more than the actual project itself. It was a flag, a rallying point. It was and is an emblem of the larger cause for the idea of stopping fossil fuel development as such. For its supporters, they also knew that a loss on this project was a loss for the whole oil industry. However, now Mr. Obama's veto has made it absolutely clear where he really stands and from the beginning has really stood. The question is, why did we have to go through all this over time? Why all the wasteful hearings, the artful delays? With the veto, who will seriously argue now that the process has not been just a cloak for delay, a cover to avoid declaring a choice already made, a political choice? Now, people with a taste for government humor, or hungry for a good oxymoron, can read that Obama vetoed the bill giving approval to Keystone because, quote, it would cut short thorough consideration of the issues involved. Of course it would. What's six years, the life of a summer fly? Actually, you could build the pyramids again and read War and Peace during the breaks during that time. What is clear is that this has been a game, a long, tedious, and wasteful game on the president's part. The man who made Yes, We Can a slogan for the ages has all along been No, You Can't on Keystone, and all the chatter about studies, challenges, and endless review was a slow dance to avoid saying what he really felt and meant. But would it not have been a courtesy to a neighboring country, a long-standing ally in peace and war, for Mr. Obama to declare himself from the beginning, to spare everyone the stalling tactics and tactical stalls by telling Canada he didn't want it, that he wasn't going to have it, and have done with all of the politics from the very beginning. That would, at least, have been more honorable, more gracious than the charade of a six-year review. For The National, I'm Rex Murphy.